Ladies and gentlemen, when you know that a Dracula movie by Hammer gets cut in the States, it's somewhat controversial. And this was extremely controversial because of the the bloodletting and the somewhat uh, sexuality of the episode. Now, today we're going to be talking about a very interesting Christopher Lee movie, Taste of the Blood of Dracula. Now, Peter Cushing was a nod in this one, but uh, the great Ralph Bates and uh, a plethora of uh, British talent was in this. Now, the supernatural horror film came out in 1970, directed by Peter Sazday with a from a, scrap, a script by Anthony Hines. It is the fifth installment in the Hammer Dracula series, and again, the fourth to star Lee as Count Dracula, the titular vampire. The film also stars uh, Jeffrey Keane and uh, Gwen Watford. Taste of the Blood of Dracula was released in numerous countries on a double, double bill of, alongside Crescendo, another Hammer production. It was followed by Scars of Dracula, also released in 1970. Now, cinematographer, cinematography by Arthur Grant, produced by Ada Young, music by the great James Bernard, distributed by Warner Pathé and Warner Brother Pictures uh, UK and International. Release was May 7th, 1970 in the UK. Now, it was cut to 91 minutes for U.S. distribution for content, but 95 minutes in the States. I mean, in the UK, and there's some argument if the movie's longer than 95 minutes, there was other minutes that were cut. The Canadian version I saw was around 97 minutes, but I didn't notice any uh, increase in the, the blood and sex motif. Now, this is an early 20th century plot. In 1905, whilst traveling around, throughout Eastern Europe, a businessman named Weller is thrown from his carriage during a struggle and knocked unconscious. After regaining consciousness, he discovers that it is nighttime. Shortly after, he sees a cape figure screaming in agony with a large crucifix impaling him from the back. The figure dies and disintegrates. Examining the remains, Weller finds a ring, a cape, and a brooch with dried blood on it. On the brooch, he reads the name Dracula. Sometime later, three men, William Hargood, Samuel Paxson, and Jonathan Secker, from a circle ostensibly devoted to charitable work uh, in the um, former circle. The, in reality, they visit brothels. One night, they are intrigued by a young man who bursts into the brothel and is immediately tended to after snapping his fingers. The gentleman turns out to be Lord Courtley, who was disinherited by his father for celebrating a black mass years ago. Now, Corkley takes a three to the Café Royale. He promises them experiences they will never forget if they visit Weller and purchase from him Dracula's ring, cloak, and dried blood. Having done so, the tree meet with Corkley at an abandoned church for a ceremony, during which he, which he puts the blood into goblets and mixes it with drops of his own blood, telling the men to drink. They refuse, so he drinks the blood himself, screams, and falls to the ground. As he grabs for hard good, uh, goods legs, all three gentlemen kick and beat him to death. They then flee, and Corkley's abandoned body transforms into Dracula, who vows that his servant's killers will be destroyed. Now, a good good scene, but a little bit over the top, like I said, come on, how are you going to bring Dracula back? Meanwhile, Hargood, a drunk, treats his daughter Alice harshly, furious that she continues to see Paul, a Paxson son. Drac Dracula hypnotizes Alice in a very effective scene, making her pick up a shovel and kill her father. The next day, Hargood is found dead, and Alice is missing. At her father's funeral, she attracts attention of Paul's sister, Lucy. That night, the two enter the church, and Alice introduces her to a dark figure. Assuming him to be Alice's lover, Lucy is greeted by Dracula, who turns her into a vampire. Now, with Hargood dead and Alice and Lucy missing, Paxson uh, teams up with Secker and visits the church. Courtley's corpse is missing, but discovers Lucy asleep in a coffin with marks on her throat. Realizing she's a vampire, Secker tries to stake her, but Paxton shoots him in the arm, forcing him to flee, and weeps over the body. When he develops the courage to stake her, she awakens and Dracula appears. Alice pins Paxton down and Lucy kills him with a wooden stake. That night, Secker's son Jeremy sees Lucy, his fiancée, and approaches her. She bites his throat, enslaving him while Dracula watches. The vampire Jeremy then stabs his father to death on Lucy's orders. When she starts begging for his approval... Dracula drains her dry and leaves her destroyed. Back at the church, Dracula prepares to bite Alice, but a cock crows, and he returns to his coffin. Now, this is just in the midst of, a, you know, just one or two days. A lot going on. Now, Secker's body causes Jeremy's arrest. While trying to defend Jeremy, Paul finds a letter in which Seeker, uh, Secker instructs him on how to fight the vampires. Following Secker's instructions, Paul goes to the church and finds Lucy's exsanguinated body, 
like I said, her body was uh, floating in a lake. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the plot here gets quite interesting. Eventually bars the door to church with a cross and clears the altar of black mass instruments, replacing them with the proper materials. He calls for Alice, who appears with Dracula. Paul confronts Dracula with a cross, but Alice, still in trance, disarms him. Dracula dismisses her and tries to leave, but is prevented by the cross barring the door. His retreat is also barred by a cross, which an angry and disappointed Alice drew to the floor. He climbs the balcony and throws objects on Paul and Alice before backing into a stained glass window, depicting a cross. He breaks the glass but sees the changed surroundings and hears the Lord's Prayer recited in Latin. Overwhelmed by the power of the newly sanctified church, Dracula falls to the altar and dissolves back in the dust. Uh, with the vampire destroyed, Paul and Alice leave. Now, a great uh, supporting cast in this Roy Kinnear shows up as well, our, our famous character actor from the UK, uh, and Ralph Bates as well as Lord uh, uh, Courtley. Now, Taste the Blood of Dracula was originally written without Dracula appearing at all. With Lee's increasing reluctance to reprise the role, Hammer intended to replace Lee and Dracula in the franchise with a Lord uh, Courtley character, played by Bates, who would rise as a vampire after his death to seek revenge on Hargood, Paxson, and Seeker. Now, Hammer's American distributor refused to release the film if it lacked an appearance by Dracula. This prompted Hammer to convince Lee to return, with Dracula replacing the resurrected Courtly. The scenes of the gentleman's visits to the local brothel were heavily edited on the film's original release. They are fully reinstated on the DVD release, and so we're talking about the U.S. cut. Some of the distributors felt it was uh, taking away the focus. An altered version of the scene where Lucy Bites Jeremy was filmed, with a young man actually becoming a vampire. The scene was not used, possibly to avoid a complicated to plot further with introduction of another vampire. Now, in its original U.S. release, it was related to GP, general audience, parental guidance suggested, the forerunner today's PG, but when it was re-released to DVD, it was rated R for sexual content nudity and brief violence. Now, Variety wrote that director Sazdi had directed his first feature film, effectively uh, leveling stock situations with the occasional shock twist and has kept the Dracula picks atmosphere well. The review noted that Christopher Lee can outplay Dracula in his sleep, and in this pick, looks occasionally as if he's doing so. Now, the monthly film Belton called it the absolutely routine Hamler film. Now, John C. Mahoney of LA Times wrote that the film was superior in production, performance, story, and atmosphere to the recent Dracula's Risen from the Grave. In the title role, Lee seems to take new interest in a role with a terrifying bloodshot performance. Now, according to Hammer Story, the authorized history of Hammer Films, called the film the finest genuine Dracula sequel in the entire Hammer Dracula series. Now, it currently holds a positive 67% score on Rotten Tomatoes based on 12 reviews. Now, on November 6, 2007, the movie was released in a film pack along with Dracula, Dracula's Risen from the Grave, and Dracula AD 72. On October 6, 2015, the movie was released in a Hammer Collection pack on Blu-ray, along with Dracula's Risen from the Grave, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed, and The Mummy. It was also released on Blu-ray separately. Now, a lot of people claim this is probably the most consistent of the Dracula movies from a plot standpoint, but the sexuality and gore kind of turned off different people. It's not like what they call a young person Dracula, mostly uh, teen to adult. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's our latest uh, Hammer review. If you like to taste the blood of Dracula, check it out, uh, reviews on YouTube, and you can probably get the movie on a streaming service. But don't forget, John Walco's reviews are coming up on the Mummy series. Stay tuned for that. And again, thanks for listening. By the way, if you go to a church, make sure it's sanctified because you don't want Dracula knocking the door saying, hello, can you donate some blood? Have a good one. Bye.